Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. My name's The Timster, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how you can add rain to your own games in the Blender Game Engine. So, this is the final result. We have some nice looking rain covering an area of the ground. This system's fairly system friendly, so it doesn't, you shouldn't be getting that much lag from it. So, basically, the system we have here has, we well, have your floor and the grass on it. And then up here you have a whole bunch of empties. And each of these empties uh, spawns, well, it's like the fire tutorial, so the setup for that where it's constantly at a certain frequency, it's minusing a number off, a value, like that. And when this value or property is equal to a certain number, it spawns in a certain object. So this sort of allows us to get uh, varied results and a bit more variation, which is cool. And each of these planes, well, if we go into layer two, we can see the planes that are spawning in. Uh, each of these is sort of a different size for variation again, and it also has a track two camera. So what that basically does is, if you walk into the rain, you can sort of slightly notice it but the planes sort of turn away uh, from you as you walk into them, like here, for example. Uh, although this can look bad, on the edges of where the rain stops, when you're walking right through the middle of it like this, it's you can slightly notice it, but not really. So the reason for using this instead of just a plane that's facing one direction is we'd need 10 times more empties to even get close to this amount of rain if we didn't have the track 2 sensors. So let's get ahead into Blender and start making it. So first thing we're going to do is click File New. I'm going to open up a new file, change it to Blender Game, turn this on, GLSL, and frame rate to 60. Now uh, this is going to be our starting sort of block so we're going to press X, delete, shift A, add a plane, press S, make it bigger, call it ground, and something like that should be fine. Now if you watched my previous tutorial, so we're going to go to the material tab here, click new, and if you watched my previous tutorial on texturing with a GIMP plugin called Insane Bump, uh, you can get a normal texture and you can generate uh, specular maps and normal maps and all these other cool types of maps to make your textures look really good. But today we're just going to be using a simple texture, so no specular, no back facing. Then we're going to go give it a new texture, image or movie, UV, and we're going to click open. And just for trial purposes, we don't even need a Amazing textures, just grass, I think might work well. Then we're going to press tab, U unwrap, and we won't be able to see anything because down here we have to select textured. And there we go. That grass texture is way too big. So the first thing we're going to do is drag over here, open up a new window, then down here select UV image editor and grass. Then select our plane here, press tab to go back into edit mode, and we'll have to reselect that. Then press S, and that will just spread out the texture a bit more, make it look a bit better. So you might want to keep scaling that until we have a good size. So something like that look good. Then what we need to do is, I'm going to select this lamp here and change it to Hemi, just so we can see what we're doing. Then I'm going to press Shift F1. And in the description will be a FPS setup sort of game file. So I've got it in my own folder here. You'll just need to get it from your downloads. So it'll be called FPS template. Click on that, then click object, click body, hold down shift, select camera, feet, and head. Just leave out floor and lamp. Then link and append, and we have a quick FPS setup done. So we can select this camera here, press X to delete it because we don't need it anymore. Then join those windows back up so we just have one big one. And now if we press 0 and press P, 
we should be able to move around. Cool thing with this uh, template is if you hold down shift you can run around uh, or sprint at a faster speed than just holding down W. So there we go, that's the FPS setup done fairly quickly. You can add in grass and stuff if you want to but I think for the tutorial's sake we'll just get straight on to making the brain. So we're going to press shift A and we're going to add an empty and move that up here, move it across a bit in front of the camera and we want it fairly high because this is where the rain spawns in so if you yeah, you don't want to have it right in front of the player because it will become really obvious where it's spawning from so you want it fairly high up but yeah again not too high so with that empty selected we can call it a rain spawner then we're going to go to the game logic here with our empty selected we're going to click add game property we're going to add integer and just call it rain you can call it anything doesn't really matter uh, then here we're going to select 3 this is the number of planes of rain so if you say want to have huge amounts of variation and you decide to make 7 different planes of rain then you would obviously set that to 7 but for this tutorial I'm only, I'm only going to do 3 so I'm going to leave that at 3 then I'm going to add an always sensor here on true and something around 30 or 40 so something like that, a frequency of that worked well. Then on this side I'm going to add a property, join the two up, and it's going to add to property rain minus one. So at a frequency of whatever number that is, it's going to minus one. And that's how frequently the objects will spawn. So we're going to click add sensor and then press P to add a property and do that. Uh, four times so we have four properties then on all of them select brain like so and on the first one here it's going to be three second one two the third one one and the last one zero then we're going to go to the actuator side click on the actuator and press E and do that three times to join it up to the first three properties, like so. Then minimize those, because we're done with them. And just to give us a bit more space. And for this last one here, when rain is equal to zero, we need to uh, reset this value. So we're going to add one more property. We're going to join those two up. Then we're going to select rain and three. So when it's equal to zero, it's going to reassign it to three and it will be a sort of loop that starts or goes continuously. So minimize all those and we're done with that. Now what we need to do is get a rain looking texture. Instead of going around searching for rain textures, we're going to make our own. We're going to open up a, another program of Blender. So a second one. If you want to, you could just, uh, you could just save this one and open up another file but I'm just going to open up a whole separate copy then we can click aside that then we're going to turn this on press 1 numpad 1 and then control alt 0 to go into front view then shift F and scroll in and we'll be able to just line up those edges something like that then select the cube press X delete shift A at a plane press S and you want to make that as big as the camera. Now, this doesn't need to be that wide, especially along the Y axis, so we can press S, Y, and scale it down a bit like that. Then, go back into camera view, numpad zero, and then G, Z, and move it up on the Z axis, then S, X, and move it across like so. Then we can, we don't even have to bother calling it anything, uh, we're going to add a particle system. So scroll along the top here to the particles and then click the plus sign. Fine, we're going to select random down here and we're not going to render the emitter and it's going to be under render we're going to select object. Then we're going to go to layer 2, press shift A, add a UV sphere, select smooth and press S to make it small. 
then give it a new material, uh, no specular, and it's just going to be an emit of one. You can maybe two. No, I'm just going to leave it at one. So an emission of one, a sphere, and then we're going to go to layer one. Select the plane here with the particle system, and down here select sphere. Select rotation, turn the random up, maybe not too much around that value, and turn the size up a bit. Now if we go into camera view and click the play button, we have lots of spheres spawning, which is cool. Might be a little bit too many for this texture though, so I'm going to turn that down to 750. See if that makes a difference, and we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to move that up just a little bit more out of the camera's view. So something like this. Then we're going to scroll along here. So we're done with this main part. Select uh, scene. So you have your render tab here and then you have your scene, the next one across. Then go to passes, select vector. And make that smaller again and open up a new window. Go to node editor, press N to hide that window, then go to your scene again, click use nodes, and now because we've selected vector, it will add this uh, speed node sort of thing in the corner. So we're going to press shift A, or you can just click add down here. So shift A, and we're going to go under filter, select vector blur, then Click in there and join the speed to the speed and then join the Z to the Z. And we're going to we'll just see how that goes now. So I'm gonna try it two and I'm gonna click render. That could work, but it's yeah, it's still looking a bit funny. So I'm gonna turn that back to one. Then I'm gonna turn the samples up to say 64, turn the render up too full. Then under shading I'm going to select transparent, go back to frame or to the beginning and then press the play button, wait till it's somewhere around the middle there, press pause and then click render. Then we have all our dots here and it blows them for us. So obviously that doesn't really seem to be enough so I'm going to turn that blur up to maybe something like three. And now we have proper sort of raindrops which is cool so that works quite nicely then we're also going to down here click RGBA turn up the compression so once you're happy with that we can one more thing I still want to do is turn up the size a bit more so maybe 0.3 then next thing we're going to do is turn up the samples to 128 this may take longer if you have a sort of not as good computer, so you can just leave that at 64 otherwise. Don't think it makes that much of a difference. Then we're gonna go into our render tab here, uh, click the folder button here, and we're gonna select an output location. So I'm just gonna select desktop, and I'm going to call it rain texture. Then I'm gonna click accept. Then I'm gonna do one more thing in this compositor here, and if you look at the sides, you can see the spheres are sort of the rounded on the edges and it doesn't look too great so I'm going to press shift A add a blur node and then select fast Gaussian and maybe on the x axis we're going to uh, maybe a value of around 5 and just to smooth them out a bit we'll give the y a little bit as well so something like that might work a bit better so 7 and 2 works fine then we're going to select our frame that we're on right now. So if you're happy with frame 46, then we're gonna, it's gonna start at frame 46 and it's gonna end at frame 46. Reason for that is so it only renders that one frame and it doesn't render from frame zero to frame 46 because that just takes too long and takes up too much space. So once you're happy with that, we can click render animation. We'll render out that one frame and there we go. Then next thing we can do is go over, open up GIMP, open up, then we can quit Blender or that one copy and 
we can go back into our original game file and go into GIMP and click File Open. We're going to go to Desktop and we're going to select Rain Texture. So click Open and there we go. Now the problem with this is it's uh, if we were to put it on a plane, you'd notice where it's sort of crossing over. So we need to make the texture seamless. So easy way to do that is under Filters, select Map and go down to Make Seamless. And there you go, now that texture is seamless from all sides, which is very helpful. Once you're done with that, click Overwrite Rain Texture, and we'll overwrite that file. Then we can close GIMP, we don't need it anymore, and we can go back into our Blender file. So now, with our Empty selected, we can go to Layer 2, Shift-S, Cursor to Center, Shift A, and we're going to add a plane. Now this plane is going to be Rain 1, and it's going to be the first sheet of rain. So we're going to scale it a bit, like so, something like that. Then we're going to go give it a new material, you can call it Rain if you want, and there's going to be no specular, and it's going to have an emit of 0.5 uh, that just worked a bit better than shadeless for me no back facing and transparency on no alpha then we're going to go to the texture panel click new texture select image or movie uh, change that to UV and click open and then we're going to go to our desktop click rain texture and click open now down here we have to also select alpha, so yeah, it affects the alpha of the texture as well. And then if we go down here to texture view, we won't see anything because it's not unwrapped. So I'm going to press Control A, apply scale, and then tab, you unwrap. That's the wrong way around. So make a new window over here, select UV image editor, press tab, and if we go into rain texture, we can press R90 and we're going to have to scale it a bit. So GY and SY and then SX. We want to get a sort of something like that. You, you want the uh, text to be fairly stretched but not too much. So you just have to sort of play around with that. Now SY on the plane itself and I think something like that looks quite nice. Then down in the alpha here, we're going to change this to 0.2. So now we need to make a new window down the bottom here. This is going to be the timeline, and we need to go to frame zero. And we're going to have to animate the alpha so it fades in nicely. So we're going to select object color. Then we're going to go to our object settings down here. Go to our object color, and at frame zero, we want it to be invisible. So no alpha and right click and so keyframe go to frame 10 uh, change that to full right click and so keyframe again there we go we have it fading in nicely then on the rain we're going to add an actuator action rain 1 action and it's going to end at frame 20 so just uh, just after the actual keyframe. So that just ensures there's no errors or anything. Then we're going to select an always sensor and join that up. What we're also going to do is add an edit object, join that up and select track to, and it's going to track to the camera. So camera one. We also, at the moment, if we press P, it just sits there. So we need to give it a motion. So select motion. Turn that up as well, and I'm going to turn loco off, and it's going to be always falling minus 0.2 on the Z axis. So if we press P, it's constantly falling like that. That's the first one done. Then we're going to press Shift D G Y. Oh, Shift D G Y. Make a, another one. This one is going to be going to have to be different though. So S X and S Y. Maybe make it a bit more make the proportions a bit different and we can press S and if we go to frame 10 here 
can see what it's going to look like. So maybe for this texture I'll make it a bit less stretched. So SY, that will bring more texture in. So maybe something like that. Then we're going to do, this one's going to be called rain number two. And there we go, it's got it all sorted out. Then shift D, G, Y one more time, and this is going to be rain number three. So I'm going to press tab, and then SX, and SY. And we're going to give it a different texture. We're going to press S and make it a bit bigger, like that. And something like that should work fine. So this one can be called rain three. And now if we go back to layer one, Select the empty here for the first object. We can select rain number one with a end time of 120. Then for the second one, rain two, a end time of 120. And for the last one, it's going to be rain three, end time 120 as well. Now if we press zero and press P, and there we go, we can see. Uh, planes, they're spawning, but they don't even reach the floor before they have disappeared. So we need to change that again to maybe try 180 on all of them. So something like that. Then also if you notice the planes were sideways, so we're going to select our, our, our empty here and then press R, Y, 90 and see if that makes a difference and all well, the planes are still sideways nearly reaching the ground but they are on the wrong rotation the reason for that is because of the uh, track 2 sensor so that sometimes mucks things up a little bit so we're going to press tab and then RY90 do that for all of them tab RY90 RY90 then we'll go back to layer 1, press 0 and press P. It appears to be right, it's sideways. So it still needs to be rotated uh, on the Z axis. So we're going to press tab and then RZ90 as well. Tab RZ90. Tab RZ90. Oh. And then we're going to press tab again, go out of edit mode and press 0, press P. And there we go, got our spawning rain. Now if you notice they are slightly overlapping, which uh, might not be too good, and that is probably due to the frequency. So we're gonna select our always, turn that up to something around uh, 44. And if we scroll in, press P and we have our rain here the problem here is though it is uh, being ended before it reaches the ground again so what we could do here is move the empty down a little bit and also turn up the time so 200 on all of them and we'll just see how that goes Oh. 200 and we'll press 0 and press P and there we go there's our working rain and if we walk around it it sort of looks around at us as well and works quite nicely so that's that first part done now you can press Control S and uh, I don't know call it rain demo and save it as that. We're going to join those two windows back up and make this a bit bigger. We're also going to join these two windows up and select 3D viewport and go back into text view. Now we need one more thing and quickly make this a little bit bigger. Uh, and that is we need a lot more empties so we still want variation with all our different empties so the re the way we're going to get that is we're going to press shift D move an empty slightly over this way and for this one we're going to turn up the frequency maybe by that much 
and then we're going to press Shift D again, and then click, and this time we're going to turn it down to something below the, this one. So now we have, uh, if we press 0 and press P, we have uh, three different types of rain spawning randomly at different times, which can work quite well. If you notice, there is a slight gap between the rain and this one over here, the long one. So if you, I guess, don't really like that look, we can turn it up a bit, but not too much. So test that. 54, and there we go. That, that seems to work fairly well. So there's uh, first three done. Now what you basically do with these three empties is you press 7. If your view looks like this, you have to press numpad 5 as well to go into orthographic. Then basically what you want to do is say you want to cover this area or the area around the player in rain. You have to press shift D and then press R and just rotate it a bit and just do that in a loop around the player. So just shift D and then R and once you've done that select all your empties so far and then deselect that then press 7 and shift D and then R Z and make another half over here and now we just need a couple more so maybe these and alt Z to go into texture view and then shift D and we're going to rotate them around something like that uh, now we'll quickly select these three and shift D one more time and rotate them a bit, shift D again, rotate them a bit more, shift D and rotate them like that. So we sort of want most of this area fairly covered. So you want to have something like that if you just wanted that one circle. So if we now press 0 and press P and wait for the rain to fall, there we go. It's rain everywhere, looks pretty cool. But then if we go outside, oh, Looks like we have had a problem, and I think I know why. If you go into layer 2, select the plane, they are set on static, which we don't want. Uh, so I'm going to have to select Ghost and Actor um, on all of them. So it just goes through everything. So we'll go back to layer 1, go into Texture View, press 0, press P, and wait for the rain to fall. And there we go. Uh, there's rain everywhere uh, in that one area where you've put all the empties. But if you go outside of it, you, I, I guess it still looks okay, but you can sort of tell where it stops and where it starts. But yeah, that's the main part of it done. What you might not like is you might think it's a bit bright, so if we go back into layer 2 and select one of them, they're all on the same material, so when you edit this material, it applies all the changes to all of the planes. So if we go into texture view, change that to 0.1 or maybe even 0.135 and then press enter and if we go back to layer 1 the rain becomes a lot less sort of intense so it blends in a bit nicer with the background. I think for the original one, I, even if I think 0.07 but yeah, you just have to see what works best with your environment and yeah, what works best overall. So there you go guys, that's how to add rain to your own games in the Blender Game Engine. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial, that's the end of it. Feel free to like, comment, share. If you have any problems, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try to help you guys out. But yeah, that's, um, that's the end of the tutorial guys. Hopefully you can now put rain in your own games. And I'll see you guys in the next one.